can you please address how one can um, assess benevolence yes. in an environment where states and stages are completely different than your own? Yes. I travel around the world and I do work with underprivileged children. Specifically, yes. last year I was in the eastern region of Tan Tanzania, as they say, wow. or Tanzania, working with over a thousand orphans uh. with a performing arts camp. Um, I am here at this retreat because it actually brought about a sense of massive inertia and uh, I just stopped doing everything yeah. because of one situation. I worked in a boy's prison. Mm -hmm. There were 32 boys. Oh, it's, it's very challenging. <laughs> Between the ages of 10 and um, 18 and some of them have no parents. Yeah. And it's in a region where it's very high, so it gets very cold at night. And I decided to buy blankets for all of them. Oh. And I spent all day in a market um, buying these blankets and picking them individually for each boy. Yeah. Two days later, I went back to the prison, and all of the blankets except two were taken. And I don't really know how to deal with this yeah. and how to continue my work globally with the kind of benevolence I have in following the B Buddhist tradition, which says that to achieve a state of happiness, you need to cherish others. But I actually am experiencing massive sorrow. Yeah. Could you please address this? Yeah. Um. I think the mass of sorrow is good. I think it's a good thing to be experiencing. And I think it's an accurate thing. I think there are a few other things that you would want to go alongside it. And one of the first things that becomes very difficult when you're studying and just studying state training is that you're faced with both samsara and nirvana. And you have to remember that many tr traditions the world over for a long time just separated the two and said, we want off of samsara and we only want nirvana. So the whole world of form, manifestation, it's illusory, it's ill, it sucks. That's exactly what causes pain. And in and of itself, that is what causes pain for the simple reason that it's separation and self and self-contraction. So wherever there is manifestation by itself there is pain and that of course is the first noble truth and so that inherent sadness though it, well l let's complete it by alongside of that or sometimes alternating with it or sometimes in a sense of almost underlying it or sometimes a sense of just the very core of it there is nirvana. And that would be represented by illumined mind or big mind or ever-present realization. And that simply feels like the space. Well, there are several different ways people can feel it, particularly at the early stages of practice. One is it can just feel like the space in which the suffering arises. So you want to first be aware of this space, this fast, open transparency that you always are and that you are right now. And then in that space, all of this is arising. This room is arising. I'm arising. My voice is arising. It's all arising in this space of your awareness, of your big mind. And then in that, this is one, one way that people can start to experience it at the beginning. There is this body-mind arising, and you're aware of it. You're aware of yourself arising, aren't you? So, who's, do, who's aware of you arising? God, Spirit, Buddha, Buddha mind. That is your pure witness. It's aware of you arising. So, you have two things you're always going to feel. It's almost kind of a schizophrenic feeling at first. But one is this ever-present witness of everything that's arising. And lots of what arising is just sheer pain. 
But on, on the non-dual and integrated side of the street, that, that sadness is how you connect with that human being on their level of manifestation. And it takes courage for you to open yourself to that pain and let those people in. But you also want to have this box, you want to have this vast container right now in which that's arising. Because that represents your realized state, your nirvanic condition, if you will. And then everything that's arising is arising within this vast state. And you're aware of both. And this vast openness gives you, in a sense, happiness. Bliss. But happiness is close enough. Or just joy. And that certainty of that is what allows you to then go into and be with this situation. is extraordinarily sad. And I'm sure you've seen a whole lot of other, in that situation, pain and suffering that could just rip your guts out. And yet you're still there doing that. But make sure you're feeling both of those feelings. And sometimes the actual sadness or anything that's arising feels that it's arising within or the modification of this vast awareness or sometimes just the texture of yourself. And so, but feeling both of them is what you want to you wanna do. So I, so I disagree a little bit here on the, you know, the notion of benevolence as sort of the main thing you should be feeling. Whatever is arising is fine. Now, I'm talking about just generically. If you're practicing or something, then you would, you know, want to work on specific emotions and states. But generically, what's arising is fine as long as you are resting in this ever-present feeling awareness, this non-dual presence, isness, suchness of moment to moment. And then to go back in and let yourself feel that, that's, a, that's bodhisattva. That's the action of bodhisattva is not one who puts off his or her enlightenment until all beings are enlightened. Because if you put off your enlightenment, how can you do anything with wisdom? You put off your enlightenment, you say, I, I vow to be stupid until everybody else wakes up. <laughs> so what you're really saying is I vow to attain enlightenment as fast as I can. Or I vow to recognize my already enlightened state. And then resting in that state to descend into hell. And that's exactly what you're doing, isn't it? You're right into hell. So I think if you just keep the nirvanic substrate alongside it, and just that deep, deep feeling of radiant joy, even as you're suffering, and it's a bit of a paradox. It becomes more natural. Okay. Thank you.